Hello ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> my name is Luke Marshall and I am a mechanical engineering student at Florida State University. Um, over this summer I've been on and off working on this clock here. It was my dad's grandmother's clock that she gave to him and uh, he just really liked the chime and everything because uh, it reminded him of her. And over about a year ago uh, the motor, <clears throat> which was composed of pieces like this, and uh, later I'll, I'll show it to you, um, and it had a coil around it, and it went in this this uh, gear right here, but it, it broke, and you couldn't actually get another motor for it, um, and he took it to a claw person, and they said that you couldn't fix it, um, so I took it and started working on it and tried to figure out a way to make it work again. And uh, I think I've successfully done it now. So I'll turn around and uh, show you all what it looks like inside. So basically what we have here is a cell phone charger, DC cell phone charger. It puts out about, I think it was five and a half volts. And uh, I have it going through this voltage regulator that I had to learn about how to make um, to bring it down to about 1.716 volts, uh, which is pretty close to what it needs to be at. Um, I've actually wired in this uh, potentiometer that you can change the voltage with uh, by, I think it has, yep, it's about, has a range of about plus or minus two millivolts, which is really pretty accurate. And I've gotten this thing down to where it's off probably no more than 20 seconds every hour depending on where you have the uh, potentiometer. Um, and so here's my circuit that I made out of the board. I had to learn how to use the LM317 which is the voltage regulator that I used and I have a, a series of resistors here that it took me a little while because I had to do basically trial and error to figure out what was the correct voltage to make the clock run at the correct time the correct speed and uh, what resistances I needed in the circuit in order to achieve that voltage range um, because it changes with everything, you know, the amount of current flowing through it and uh, how much resistance you have. So here's the motor. I actually got this out of an old DVD player that I took apart and I 3D printed this, uh, this bracket that it's in. So I'll, I'll take that out and I'll show it to you. And I used a gearbox for the motor that came with uh, this other motor that I actually broke for an engineering project at school uh, that I had lying around and so it all fit together and I put it in and it worked pretty good. Hello. Well, I got the motor out of the back of here. Um, and this is actually the piece that I 3D printed. Um, you can see the mount and how it goes in here and then the gearbox and the motor are all attached inside of here but uh... because I designed this all in CAD um, in a program that I downloaded off the internet for free I think it was a student version and uh... it actually fit quite well I put some sticky putty on here to keep the wires all wrapped up I used it a lot um, for tentative stuff because I didn't want to solder these wires together because. I figured I'd be taking them off at some time, but um, it's worked out well. Um, here's the plate that originally came with the, the motor that was originally in here, and I left it on there and just put the nuts on top of it. But you can see um, where the motor originally was, that little circular outline. And uh, this just kind of went on here like this. And then it went through uh, the two mounts that are on the, uh, or the, the three nut holes that are inside the clock. Um, but overall, it's been, it's been fun. It's been a fun challenge, and I've uh, enjoyed learning about how to do it all. Um, I've learned a lot, and uh, I'm glad that I was able to get it to work. So thank you for watching. Bye.